I'm like, but why are we wearing cons- contrast color? <laughs> and do you know the I funny know. thing? What? I'm wearing Great Ife, which is like a university in Nigeria, and you're wearing Miami, which is a university here. And honestly, <laughs> we did not plan it. No. This just happened. So, this, this can you see? Like, our mind is just in sync <laughs> with this video. And these people are so busy. Like, when I came here, you know, when I was in Nigeria, I used to be like, oh my God, I wish I studied in the US. When I came here, I was thanking God that I did not do my bachelor's in the US. <laughs> Anyways, welcome back to another episode on my YouTube channel. As you know, and if you don't know, my name is Ola. So if you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. Please join the family. To join the family, all you need to do is subscribe down below. I mean, subscribe down below. I mean, press the button down below. <laughs> and make sure you comment. Make sure you share my video. Make sure you also give my video a thumbs up. And in today's video, I'm sure it's not like a topic that you were expecting But as you can see from the title, in today's video, I brought um, someone that did their undergrad in the US here To talk about um, what it is like um, doing your undergrad in the United States And we'll be doing like a little bit of like comparative analysis between what undergrad looks like in Nigeria versus what it looks like in the United States and before we move on please I'm going to say that I'm going to put a disclaimer out there with this video we are just going to say things as it is um, we are going to state the reality of things and we are not um, we are not I'm, I'm not saying I'm not trying to say do not come to the US to study please that is not the purpose of this video it is just to open people's minds so that they know and they prepare for what they are coming to do or to like compare like a bit of comparative analysis so people know which one is better for them as they make their choices please do i already offered this camera nobody's come and wire me in the comment section that he's saying that we should not come to the u.s to come and study i'm not saying that because i'm also studying in the u.s so please anyways um so i'm going to give it to our guest to introduce himself okay all right what's up y'all so my name is alexander Ikwebike. so i did my undergrad here i was a um, major bachelor of arts in uh chemistry came mm -hmm. back and i did my um, masters of science in chemistry more specifically you know analytical chemistry the best type of chemistry in my opinion <laughs> nice so i think we'll just start from what you just said because like the way you said masters of arts in chemistry in nigeria that is now is not it's not going to be like that and mm -hmm. i think that's like the most surprising thing for me i don't know how you people label science arts and whatever it is you mm -hmm. label because also currently i'm getting a master of science in education mm -hmm. and i'm like that looks weird because if yeah. i was in nigeria it would be masters of education mm -hmm. so why would you get like a bachelor's of arts in chemistry when chemistry is like a science subject yeah, so I guess really the Bachelor's of Arts, it's it's really more, it gives you more flexibility to take um, non-science classes, because mm -hmm. I know, um, not saying that I had more flexibility to take, I don't know, um, political science classes, mm -hmm. um, music classes, um, I don't know, some math classes, even though that was part of my um, my course plan. Mm -hmm. I also, because uh, I, I also minored in like individual studies, like audio engineering, um, that gives you flexibility. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas a BS, it gives you get your hone in to more of your um, subject area. You take a lot more classes in chemistry. You might take a little stuff like biology, okay, or um, let's see physics or any of like STEM courses. For STEM, you don't know it's um, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, and so that's kind of the difference between the two. And I know for getting a job, um, BS is usually preferred because you'll take more of your major classes than that of a. Um, BA. Oh, okay, but, I see. Yeah. So it's possible for someone to get like a BS in chemistry. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So it depends on like how you do the structure. Yeah. That's what will determine if you if you get like mm -hmm. a bachelor of art or a bachelor of science. Yeah. So thank you for clarifying. In Nigeria, mm -hmm. there's nothing like that. In Nigeria, there's always like bachelor of science, bachelor of arts for arts courses, bachelor of education for education courses, and bachelor of science for science courses. So there's nothing like a mix up between between those although i know that one of my friends in nigeria which is just for one course that i heard of archaeology mm -hmm. there's like a bachelor of arts for it and there's like a bachelor of science for it mm -hmm. so like 
what would determine if you got the Bachelor of Arts or the Bachelor of Science is based on like exactly what you said, like mm -hmm. the classes you took. So now that that is out of the way, we will <laughs> move into the video proper. I mean, that is what are you implying? It's also part of the video, <laughs> but we'll move into the video. So yeah, they might say they might have an impromptu exam or quiz um, in, in the syllabus, mm -hmm. but in practice, they might not ever actually do that. That typically happens when it's evident that the class is not reading the assigned materials. And it's almost like a form of punishment. It's like, okay, you guys aren't doing what you're supposed to do. So me as the um, professor, I'm going to put a pop quiz to kind of kind of punish you. Like, let's see if you who's actually doing the reading, and if not, let this be a warning that this might happen again. But those are those are rare um, that you'll have a pop quiz. They're usually announced, and students will complain, yeah. <laughs> and eventually that will work up the ladder of, yeah. um, and then that teacher depending on if they're um more senior um or not they mm -hmm. might not do not do that again so okay so yeah it's rare okay so that's just like or like nigeria where like a lecturer can ask you with tests like that doesn't happen here and mm -hmm. then we feel like something is not going all right you can report whoever is your professor and typically <laughs> who they call professor is, is what basically what we call lecturer in Nigeria. So it's like the same thing. So in case you hear him saying professor, it's basically like just different terminologies. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So let's move to A's since we are talking okay. about classes. <laughs> so I feel like this is the most important thing to me because in Nigeria, like our own A starts from 70. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So, our A is 70, <laughs> so our A is 70 to 100. Okay. <laughs> but over here, can you please help me lecture them on like A minus, A, A plus, and all of those nonsense, nonsense, nonsense mm -hmm. that people used to do here. I don't know whether A cannot be A. Like you say one is A plus, one is A minus, one is A. What's, what's that? <laughs> so please lecture them. So yeah. So first of all, that was wild when you said that um, a 70 is considered an A. Yeah. And 70 What is 70 considered here? As a C minus. Imagine. Yeah, <laughs> that is a C minus. So, on a typical grading scale, um, ninety to one hundred is an A, eighty to eighty nine is a B, seventy seventy nine is a C, and then um, is it sixty to sixty nine is a D, then fifty nine and lower is an F, and mm -hmm. so um, depending on the difficulty of the class, like for example, my organic, it's like my organic. Um, chemistry class it had like 87 was an a the cutoffs were adjusted and so i just gave you this the typical grading system mm -hmm. um for a's b's c's yeah A's. and i know that sometimes like um a professor can also decide like the grading system for their mm -hmm. class because i know um when in my foundation class like i think she adjusted the a to start from 91 Mm -hmm. And then A minus was 89 to 91. So for A minus, basically what it means is A minus is like B in Nigeria. It's going to take a little <laughs> bit from your grade. So that's what it means. So when you get A minus and you are rejoicing, I mean, it's a good grade, but it's not all that good, good, good. So if you are, um, if you are, um, if you are looking for like the perfect thing to get, it's usually like an A plus or A because those are within the same category. So that's that about the A or the A minus or the grading system, basically. Then also something else, Jesus. When I was in undergrad, <laughs> for me, I was just focused on my book, my book, my book, my book, my book. I didn't know how to balance my time. But in the US, oh my God, if I tell you that these people are so busy, like when I came here, I know when I was in Nigeria, I used to be like, oh my God, I wish I studied in the US. When I came here, I was thanking God that I did not do my bachelor's in the US. <laughs> Important thing. Mm -hmm. So when I was in Nigeria, like, I feel like, I mean, I went to a public school. And I mean, mm -hmm. Miami is also a public yeah, school, right? I went to a public school and I feel like I didn't really pay much, like, in terms of, like, money all through my four years in terms of school fees. The money I paid before the eventually, I mean, they eventually increased the fees. But, like, the money I paid all through my four years was just 40,000 naira, which is, mm -hmm. which is not even up to 100 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about how the school fees is? in the United States? Yeah, so for the most part, there are like two main branches of institutions. There's like um, public universities, like the institution that we are, Miami University, and then mm -hmm. there's like private institutions like um, University of Dayton, um, Notre Dame um, College in Cleveland, Ohio. People don't um, know that, so just say. Okay. 
just yeah. this part, it's like it's really just more like religious institutions mm -hmm. like um those that are the catholic or mm -hmm. uh, methodist um i got a little too specific but i think you'll get the general you might get the general gist um and so uh with public schools um especially if you live within the state and so i got i think my tuition was room and board let me see only about like 15,000 with scholarships. So you can get scholarships to reduce the overall costs. Um, whereas with a private institution, um, the tuition reward is double because they don't have um, funding from the federal government mm -hmm. or um, the state. They are all self-funded. Mm -hmm. And so that makes um, college a little more expensive to mm -hmm. go there. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> and also something I want to add to it is if you are international, Remember that like the way you said you got fifteen thousand is because it's in state. And what mm -hmm. in state means is that you're staying in Ohio and you attended a school in Ohio. But if you're international, you are basically going to pay the out of state, which is mm -hmm. usually more expensive. Mm -hmm. Right now, I heard that the out of state at Miami is like fifty eight thousand US dollars, which is a lot. So mm -hmm. yeah, also pay attention to that. Particularly if you are deciding should I do my bachelor's in Nigeria or should I do my bachelor's in the US? And I'm Typically, for this video, we are basically talking about bachelors because for masters, you get graduate assistantship that can fund your education. Right. So let's also move to hostel during break since you already um, talked about like room and board. Mm -hmm. So particularly in Nigeria, you know, like in Nigeria, like the way where we go for Thanksgiving break, they don't chase us out of the hostel. I mean, we don't have Thanksgiving. <laughs> what am I even saying? We don't have Thanksgiving break in Nigeria, but like all these mini little public holidays. Or like, oh, maybe there's Easter break and they give us Easter break and we go home. They don't chase us out, right? <laughs> but in the US, like, where I work, I feel like we chase people out. And mm -hmm. I feel like that makes it a little bit of... Because I know yes. in Nigeria, even like the little things, like after exam, they still give us like accommodation to leave. But we still complain. Mm -hmm. But like on getting to the US, okay, <laughs> I will just let you say it. Because on getting to the US, like... The day you finish your exam is the day you are supposed to vacate. So I'm going to give you an example. Mm -hmm. People will finish their exam on May 12th, which is like on a Friday evening. Mm -hmm. And they are expected to vacate on that same Friday. Mm -hmm. If they don't leave on that same Friday, they would have to pay extra money to stay. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is making it more of like a yes. capitalist mm -hmm. system. Yeah. <laughs> so... I mean, most of the time, I feel like we, we, we complain about, oh, Nigerian education system, Nigerian education system. But sometimes I feel like it's also better than this place because, <laughs> like, every little thing you do here is also about the money. Like, it's about the money. Your education is business to them. It's about the money. But, of course, we'll go more in-depth into what makes the money worth it, what makes people want to spend the money because they are getting value for their money. Then we'll go to lecture free week. <laughs> so in Nigeria, the way it is, I know you might be like, oh, what is lecture free week? So in Nigeria, the way it is, like, after classes, they'll give us, like, a week to read for exam. Okay. So can you see how it is in the U.S.? <laughs> I wish that was the case here. Yeah. So tell them, how is it in the U.S.? Is there so, anything like lecture free week? <laughs> there is no such thing as lecture free week. Okay. So. Before, they used to have, um, at least here at Miami, they used to have night exams, whereas, um, so let's say your exam is um, on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. and so you would still expect to show up to class to learn the lecture material. Obviously, that's not part of the exam, mm -hmm. but you come back, let's say, at um, 6 o'clock to take a two-hour exam. Yep. So there is no, all your studying is done outside of the assigned lecture time yes and so yeah where you know, a week and i was like what yeah. <laughs> you we barely you get a day if you're lucky if your professor is that gracious yeah and so yeah that's mm -hmm. it, it's something that doesn't happen in american higher ed institutions yeah. <laughs> and i also feel like you get a day like maybe you have classes on monday i usually do have classes on tuesday mm -hmm. you can get that tuesday off to read yeah. But aside from that, there's nothing like anything free. Mm -hmm. And also, like, they do test a lot here, like, undergrad, because, I mean, since I'm a graduate student, I don't really write test and exam. Although some departments do, but for my own department, mm -hmm. we don't. But for undergrad, like, I have a friend that is always writing an exam, like, every week. 
he's always writing the exam and that we are going to church he's always carrying a book to read and i'm like hey are you the only one in school because i don't understand it's every week that you're always having the exam every week that you're always having tests and it's not like they're giving them like extra time to read you just have to know how to manage your time and i feel like that makes it harder because i feel like in nigeria there's still like a little bit of allowance for us to read but over here like there's no allowance like you have a class on monday you would you might have the test for that class on that same monday but i think what makes it different is because in nigeria like they do impromptu tests like they won't tell okay. you they'll okay. just come up with a test but like i don't know does that happen in the u.s where a lecturer uh -huh. will not tell you and you just mm -hmm. get to class and they will say oh see i mean there's no sheet of paper they'll just say, bring out your system and start typing <laughs> tests does that like is that very frequent in the in nigeria so um I'll I'll speak to my experience. So I've never had so well Ola said she had a, a impromptu quiz. So in America we call that like pop quizzes. Um and so that hasn't really happened and so they may have it in the Honestly, these people <laughs> are terribly busy. Like they are very busy. They have classes, they have um on campus organizations, they have mm -hmm. clubs. Mm -hmm. Some of them are even working while on campus. And I'm like, how are you able to balance all of these things mm -hmm. out? Because when I was in college, I was not working. Mm -hmm. The only thing I had, the only responsibility I had was to face my book. Mm -hmm. And I still felt like the time was not enough for mm -hmm. me. So how are you all <laughs> able to balance your time? Because I kid you not, like these people are very busy. And in the midst of this, they will tell you, oh, I have two exams today. Sometimes I sit down and I ask myself, particularly with my eyes, like, what time do they have to study? Because they literally go to class every time. What class do they have? What time do they have to study? And there's no free anything. No. I'm telling you, if, <laughs> if school starts today, that is Monday. Classes like, the, you know how in Nigeria, that the first week, class, like lecturer will come, lecturer will not come. I'm telling you that classes begin that same Monday. 7 a.m. class begin that same Monday at 7 a.m. Like there's nothing like, oh, my lecturer will come or my lecturer will not come. It's not like that here. They are very, very busy people. And <laughs> like when I came, I was just thankful for the... F I mean, if I started from here as well, I felt I feel like I would have adjusted. But at the same time, like I'm just thankful for the fact that I did not start from here because they are just too busy. And out of all of this, they still go to parties. I'm like, how are you people? Like, how do you people plan all of these things? They still go to parties and they are still doing well academically. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I have no word. I have no word. And I think it also um, pertains to the next thing we want to talk about, which is like work and study. I think we already said it that in Nigeria, most people don't work and study. Most people just go to school and focus on the study mm -hmm. part. Like, I know there are some, like, programs that is, like, work and study. Mm -hmm. But, like, you have to apply for it. But it's not like yeah. you're getting random jobs or anything. Or you mm -hmm. can either own a business mm -hmm. where you can either make it for people, do nails mm -hmm. for people, or sell things. Yeah. And, honestly, I would not really consider that as work and study. But, yeah, <laughs> that's not so prevalent in Nigeria. <laughs> then another thing is talking to lecturers which is what you call professors mm -hmm. in nigeria first first of all i'm going to start <laughs> from the fact that in nigeria you know how a year is like if you work for it like if mm -hmm. you read and you work for it you get it yeah but in nigeria like your lecturer will come to class even though the a starts from 70 i'm telling mm -hmm. you that that a is still hard to get <laughs> because your lecturer will come to class and your lecturer would say a is for god b is for me c is for my family members and D is for the remaining people in class. Yeah. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like in Nigeria, like they set up the system in such a way that it is conditioned to fail you. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. so, for instance, like maybe a, maybe a, a professor or a lecturer, that is what we call it in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Maybe the person finished with the first class, which is like a distinction. Uh -huh. Then they will say it in class that I'm the last first class to finish in this department, mm -hmm. and I don't want any other person to beat me or uh -huh. outweigh me. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why are you even like why are you why are you spreading that negative vibe? Mm -hmm. So it's always very <laughs> difficult to get a. And they talk to you anyhow, like your professor. Like I see people aside from calling professors' name because. Calling names is not even for me. Like, you can call me name, but I want you to respect me. In Nigeria, like, the respect you give to your professors, first of all, you dare not call your professor's name. If somebody <laughs> is doctor and you call the person Mr. because of that, they can, they mm -hmm. can deduct your grade. They can remove from your grade mm -hmm. because they are doctor and you decided to call them Mr. Mm -hmm. And also, you can see your lecturer passing and you don't greet them or they are carrying something and you don't take it from them. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. You dare not do that. 
So, yeah, and also, you know, like how they say, Professor Office Hour, there's nothing like that in Nigeria. There's no office hour because they don't even want your lecturer to know you. Because once they know you, they are monitoring your grade. Uh -huh. And if you're a good student and they see that, oh, this person is doing well, they will want to drop you a little bit. Mm. I mean, I'm talking for public schools here. Yeah. I'm not talking about private. I don't know how it is in a private institution because I know you people literally pay a lot to go to private mm -hmm. institution. But I'm talking for a public institution. So how is it like in the US? Like, I want you to tell them how approachable it is <laughs> to talk to your professors. Like, how do you relate with your professors? Yeah. yeah. So what I want to say that that was mind-boggling to me because that wouldn't fly in America <laughs> because. <laughs> We have the we as students have the power of social media, yeah. and we can complain. And enough people complain to essentially their boss, which mm -hmm. is the dean. They have the power of like, hey, this lecturer, you have to change. Um, although we have some, um, I don't know if you have it in Nigeria, but we have a system called being tenured, and so it's a system where if you're a new lecturer or professor, you spend um, not typically like maybe four to five years. Um, Building up your academic, um, academic research, if you do it, uh, typically is research and service to the department. And so once the department deems, okay, you're tenured, you essentially, you essentially have that job until you retire. Mm -hmm. So it's, it essentially is yours to lose. Um, but again, I guess I say that because some, some professors let that go in their head. I was like, I can treat you however I want and I'm not, I'm not going to lose my job. However, in my, in my case, um, a lot of professors are very approachable. They ask you a question, or you can, you can go ask them a question about concepts. Um, there is office hours here, and actually professors love it when you go to office hours because no one goes to office hours, and they are mandated by their department and the university to, to have office hours. And so they, it actually says that you actually want to learn the material. Mm -hmm. And so you actually are a serious student. Um, and so if you call, let's say if you call, if I called my professor, like Mr. Um, it probably wouldn't, the first time it's like, okay, that's fine, it's just a, a mistake. If you call it, if you keep calling him Mr., then it'll be like, hey, mm -hmm. you can't. Hey, that's you can't not do that, yeah. yeah, but they're not gonna lower your grade because of that. They're not gonna <laughs> because like, of oh. night, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because again, it's like we have, we as students, we have the power, especially at a smaller school like Miami University is. Now, granted, it's still a public school, but we have the leverage. Like, hey, if enough people will go complain mm -hmm. to um, the lecturer's boss, mm -hmm. that'll actually affect um, yeah. change. Yeah, and that seems like that's something that that doesn't happen in um, <laughs> in like Nigerian public institutions. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, granted, um, now granted, there are some professors who are just like that who, who have this um, superiority complex to them, if you will. That yeah. um, hey, I've I've done this for a whole lot of years. I know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so basically what this means is that like there's power in the voice of um students in the US. Like mm -hmm. nobody can just tell you any trash. Yes. <laughs> if it doesn't sit well with you, like there are people that you can complain to and they will take it up. Unlike Nigeria, if you complain, they will sweep it <laughs> under the carpet. So yeah. And then something else I know in Nigeria is um people do sex for great. I know like when I tell people like it's always um surprising to them so what this means is like if your lecturer is like asking you out like wanting to have a relationship with mm -hmm. you and it's not like wanting to have a relationship like <laughs> basically your lecturer wants to sleep with you <laughs> but but you don't agree mm -hmm. the lecturer might either fail you for it and say until you mm -hmm. sleep with me that is when i will pass you mm -hmm. Wow. Which is <laughs> which is a bummer. <laughs> wow. Which is a bummer. So yeah, so like that is also prevalent in Nigeria. And also on campus resources. I feel like um the way the US system is structured, the system is structured for you to succeed. Mm -hmm. So and that is why like most people say that oh it's easy to study in the US. No, it's not easy. What is easy is that, I mean, what makes it easy is that the system is structured for you to succeed, but you still need to put in your diligence, mm -hmm. you still need to put in the hard work. Mm -hmm. Unlike in Nigeria, you put in the hard work, but the system is not structured in a way for you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Like, why would you go to class and you are feeling scared? You don't want your professors to know you because, mm -hmm. particularly your male professors, because once they know you, <laughs> they are like, okay, that's the end of it. Because, especially if you are like fine and you have like a nice shape, 
You mm. want to be hiding because once yeah. they figure you out, mm. they will start disturbing you, and as a result, you might even be brilliant, but they might start failing you because you refuse to sleep with them. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So I feel like those are like all the um, practices. Um, yeah, I feel like these are like all the practices. And if there's something else that I did not say about Nigeria, mm -hmm. but you remember, please, please, please <laughs> put it in the comment section and I'm going to respond to you. Yeah, I promise, like, I'm going to respond to all of you. So put it in the comment section. So maybe you've been thinking that, oh, she might not respond to me. Put it in the comment section. I will respond to you. Let us make this video interactive. And please share my video, comment down below. And if you're watching from the US as well, and there's one practice that I did not talk about too in the US, also put it in the comment section and yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you found this video helpful and i hope with all these few points of ours you've been you've been able to sit down to decide on do i want to do my bachelor's in the u.s or do i want to do it in nigeria and then after my bachelor's in nigeria then i can change and um and go to the u.s particularly in terms of fees and that is what i'm going to say if you know you don't have that enough money I'm going to say that you should maybe this is an advice, so please don't come for me. Maybe you should try to like do your um bachelor's in Nigeria just so that you can get fully funded to do like your master's or your PhD in the US. Yeah, so that's all about this video. Make sure you subscribe, comment, share. I'm saying it again. Subscribe, comment, 